Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today we're doing a manga haul for the month of September. The first one is Blade of the Moon Princess, Volume 1. This is by Tatsuya Endo, the same creator from Tista and Spy Family. We're getting the tale of the Princess Kaguya. Now she is up in the moon. It's a very famous Japanese folk tale and all that. And this is sort of a sci-fi action twist to that. I love the art here. This has a very Masashi Kishimoto feel to it. When I look at the art here, is it just me? I don't know. But I love the art regardless, and I love the fact that you can take classic folklore and twist it around into something new, fun, creative. Fortunately, it's only five volumes, so it's not a huge commitment for your wallet or your shelf. Next up is Call of the Night, Volume 13. Now, I haven't read this as of me making this video, so I'm not gonna go too into detail of the pages here, because I'm gonna spoil the story, but I love this. Kotoyama is one of my favorite modern mangaka. I love his art style so much, and Call of the Night is just a fantastic vampire story. Even though I'm not huge on vampire manga, I really enjoy this. I like the twist of, you know, it being a coming of age story with the tropings of vampires and the creepy stuff that happens at night. Love it. Nana, volume one. Now this is pretty interesting. I found this at Walmart of all places. I know, I know, a lot of modern retail stores are starting to sell different manga, which is fantastic. I still can't believe it when I see new releases there. But to see an older classic like this is really bizarre and awesome. I don't know if I'm ever going to collect the entirety of Nana. I remember watching the show, but I've never read the manga. But I am excited. It's one of those famous shoujo stories that everybody recommends. I want to finally start reading it, and this is the perfect excuse for that. Insomniac's After School Volume 3, continuing this excellent series. I love the art on this and just the overall laid back, slice of life, chill vibes. You have the two main characters here. They started the Astronomy Club as an excuse for their insomnia, for a place for them to relax, I should say. But it grew into something more, something special, potential romance, all that wonderful stuff and you just go through their journey at school and the the things that the astronomy club is doing with the nighttime photography and all that really lends itself to a serene yet beautiful reading experience of first love if you will drcl or hashtag dracula if you will volume one from shinichi sakamoto I have to tell you that when I first read the solicit for this book, my dummy brain thought, okay, so the mangaka made the adaptation of Dracula, that's cool. Oh, it's only gonna be two hardcovers. Boy, was I wrong, it's an ongoing series. So when I started reading this volume, the first hardcover, which was great by the way, a really cool modern reimagining of the story with breathtakingly beautiful artwork. When I was reading it, I thought, man, it's supposed to be two volumes. Keep in mind, this is what I thought back then, before realizing it's an ongoing series. I thought, you know, for two volumes, the pace is pretty slow. I mean, <laughs> there's a lot of ground to cover if you want to adapt the entirety of Dracula. But then, of course, I realized by the end, Oh, it's an ongoing, so yeah, we're gonna get a volume 3, 4, and so on and so forth. But definitely do consider picking this up. The price tag, a little expensive, but if you know where to shop, like in stock trades, right stuff, or I guess, oh my god, Crunchyroll store, I should say, uh, you should get good deals on it. So definitely do consider DRCL for your collection. The art alone makes this a must own. Pokemon X and Y, 4, 5, and 6. I am so happy to own the entirety of the Pokemon Adventures X and Y series. So much fun to be had here. I love Generation 6. I love the Kalos region and the Mega Evolutions and all that stuff. So I'm really excited to dive in 
and experience that all over again in the lens of the adventure series. I cannot wait. So with this, I am up to date with the adventures branding. The next one should be uh, Oraz or Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, which comes out early next year. And then we just need Sun and Moon, which should be, I guess, nine volumes. And um, Sword and Shield should be another eight or nine. So on our way to a complete set of Pokemon Adventures manga. That's great. Handyman Saito Volume 2. I highly, highly recommend this. If you want a funny, heartfelt, good fantasy manga with like dark fantasy overtones and great character interactions and just great lore and world building, do consider Handyman Saito. Basically an isekai, but you have to ignore that stuff and you follow the main character as he is journeying through this new land and becoming part of a team that essentially becomes his new family. So yeah, definitely do pick this up if you're interested. Oshinoko Volume 3, this came out back in August, I think, but I forgot to get it, so here it is right now. <laughs> I loved the anime, and I knew I wanted to collect the series, and the art in this is great. One of my favorite aspects of Oshinoko is the art. The story, it's wacky, you know, but it's fun. Toge Oni Volume 1 from Yen Press. I was really intrigued when this got solicited. And here we are with Volume 1 in my hands. I love the artwork on this. And I like the idea that this is a story that's like in the ancient times before recorded history. What if? What happened back then? So to have a story in that time frame is really exciting to me as a history nerd and as a, a fan of fantasy books and all that stuff. I was really looking forward to Toge Oni. Like I said, I like the art, I like the idea, and there are some really interesting concepts here that involve uh, time travel and gods and monsters and all bunch of crazy stuff. So yeah, really uh, recommend this one as well. Here we have the third volume of Sengoku Yoko. I'm so happy that this is getting an anime adaptation. Hopefully it fares better than the Lucifer and the Biscuit Hammer adaptation. It looks to be the case. I think it's gonna be a, a home run for it. I am a fan of Satoshi Mizukami, one of my favorite sci-fi mangaka. So this was a no brainer for me. Continuing the adventures here. It's action packed shonen stuff, but definitely well drawn with good characters. Speaking of shonen and monsters, we got Kemono Jihen volume seven. We are officially past the stuff that was animated for the show so i'm really excited for that i like its usage of japanese folklore with yokai and creatures and monsters and all that stuff and how they're able to uh, create a little modern twist on it really fun definitely check it out as well yakuza reincarnation volume 7 i finally got up to date with this and it is one of my favorite modern isekai manga so the first couple of volumes, and I think I mentioned this in one of the reading vlogs, the first couple of volumes, they don't do a whole lot. They establish the lore bit by bit, but it's once you get past like volume two or three where things really start to pick up and you get some amazing world building and some great interactions. I highly recommend it if you want a mashup of fantasy tropes with Isekai, definitely. I give Yakuza Reincarnation a shot. From that, we move on to Dinosaur Sanctuary Volume 3, continuing this amazingly well-crafted sci-fi slice of life series. I love dinosaurs so much. I've talked about it in the past extensively, and we get more of that here. Volume 3 has a friggin' poster. This blew my mind. I love posters, booklets, brochures, the fact that it resembles something that might exist in real life, really makes it for a much more interactive experience. Definitely enjoyed Dinosaur Sanctuary. Go pick this up. Finally on this mini haul, we got Soada and the House of Monsters Volume 1. This is pretty cool. One of my favorite reads so far from the fall. We have Soada, who was gearing up for combat and war between 
all the different factions, but unfortunately, or fortunately, peace has arrived, so she can't participate in that, but gets involved with one of the dwarves into creating home structures for different species and creatures and utilizing her abilities for that. If you like Dragon Quest builders, house hunting, house building, that kind of stuff with the whole fantasy element and the characters and tropes and all that, definitely give Sawada and the House of Monsters a shot. Volume one. Just one Blu-ray for this video. We got Call of the Night complete season. I love Call of the Night, like I mentioned at the start of the video, and here we have the anime version of it, which I think beautifully enhances Kotoyama's design. The coloring, background art, and lighting that goes into this is spectacular. I love this so much. This, if I could live in a neon-drenched world, sign me up right away, please. I love how this looks, and it's a wonderful story. Like I said, with the uh, manga volume, coming of age mixed with the tropes of a vampire story. So definitely do give it a shot. Watch the show. And if you really like the anime, then jump on board and continue reading the manga. This season covered, I believe it was five manga volumes and a half for um, the 12 episodes. So definitely do check out Call of the Night. This is one of my favorite shows of 2022. Highly recommend it. So there you go, guys. That is the September manga haul. Pretty small, I know, could have been bigger, but hey, that's what we got. Thank you everybody for tuning in. If you want me to review a specific item, let me know in the comment section, and also let me know what you got in the month of September. Very interested in finding out. Thank you, everybody, once again. God bless. Stay safe out there. Thank you for liking, subscribing, and all that wonderful stuff. You guys are the best. I've got to go. I will catch all of you on our next video.